Hi, I'm Dr. Ty Vincent. Uh, this is another video about LDI, specifically discussing the use of placebo doses. Um, I've put it out there to the world through my patient handout that we created that's super long and has a lot of detail in it and other uh, venues that I sometimes send people placebo doses. And it's, it's also gotten out by patients who we've given placebos to and then told the world that we gave them placebos. And, um, so I'm gonna address this topic head on, okay? People have a tendency to react negatively to the idea of receiving a placebo. And you're gonna have to get over that. You're gonna have to relax, and I'll explain why. Um, every drug study ever done to get a medication approved, or even like herbs and supplements, any legitimate scientific study in the field of medicine involves a placebo. And the reason why is that 25 to 30 percent of people will respond or believe that they respond to a placebo. Okay, that's a lot of you. The number of you that I've encountered who are willing to admit that you might have a placebo response is around zero. So people have an unrealistic view of themselves and their ability to read their body or determine what's going on with any kind of accuracy. Okay, that's just a fact. And sick people who are chronically ill, extremely ill, and have been through hell with a number of medical treatments for years are extremely prone to the placebo effect. It's just the way it is, okay? So I find this to be an extremely useful tool. The benefit of using a placebo, the whole point of it, is so that we can identify what a real response to an LDI dose happens to be in your case versus a placebo response to an LDI dose. Because what happened to me for years when I did not use placebos is the people who thought every single dose was making them worse None of the doses were making them worse. None of the doses were doing anything to them at all. And I didn't give a lot of people placebos for the first two or three years of using LDI because I thought, well, I'll just keep backing off, right? So what happens in that instance, if you get a dose of LDI, you think it makes you worse, and it's actually doing nothing, is that we end up waiting seven weeks, backing off to a weaker dose, and then you think that one makes you worse also, very similarly, right? This is how I started to figure this out, is that I would get the exact same report time after time after time, even though we had gotten a trillion times weaker with the dilution. And I got like the same response. And by the time I started to realize that I don't think the person's actually responding to the dose, I think that they are altering their perception of their symptoms because of taking something. And that's really what the placebo effect is. It's an alteration of perception. It's not that the symptoms necessarily really change, it's that you, the way you view them changes. And so we were making a mistake going backwards and backwards, and eventually those people would just quit because their assumption or their, their assessment was, LDI doesn't work for me, it only makes me worse, I'm gonna quit. And so what happened was I was unable to help those people. So if I get the sense that that's what's happening to a patient now, I throw in a couple of placebo doses, and if they say the same kind of thing from a placebo dose, at that point, we have an opportunity to actually help that person, okay? Previously, I lost them, I was unable to help them. And the whole point of this is to help people that are sick, right? Right. So giving that person a placebo would allow me to say, hey, what you are experiencing after a dose is your baseline. And then we could document that very thoroughly, they could be aware of that, and any dose we gave them going forward that was real and progressively stronger in dilution, they would know how to compare that response to what they had experienced previously with a placebo. So why this occurs for people is twofold, I think. One is just fear, okay? A lot of people that are chronically ill and very ill are very afraid of getting worse, and they know that LDI has the potential to make them worse. So after they take a dose, there's a tendency to think you're worse. It's just the way it goes, okay? Especially with very subjective symptoms, fatigue, pain, sleep, brain fog, all kinds of digestive stuff. You know, there's a lot of symptoms in the body that are heavily colored and influenced by your mental state about things, right? It's just how we're wired. The other thing which I explain to people in this, with this analogy is that if you're looking directly at the sun, which is a bad idea, so I close my eyes. If you look directly at the sun, it's a hell of a lot brighter, okay? I'm standing out here in the sun, you can see my eyes are shaded. I'm not looking right at it. I can tell that it's bright, but if I stare at it, I'm gonna burn a hole in my retina, okay? Because I'm paying direct attention to it. And so we live our lives not doing that, right? Unless you're Donald Trump and you stare at the eclipse and burn a hole in your retina. Anyway, so 
when people are extremely ill, the only way that they get through their life day after day after day to, is to some extent ignore their symptoms so that they can get by, right? Many of you have gotten to that point. Like, I'm just going to push ahead, head down, live my life the best I can. And I'm going to try to ignore some level of my symptoms. And so then I tell you to take this LDI dose. And what I need you to do is pay really close attention for several days after or a week after. And what happens with that directed attention is things will seem to be worse. Okay. It, it happens a lot. And it happens more often to those of us that are sicker and those of us that have more fear and anxiety about our illness. And that's a large part of my population. It just is. So with that understood, it, I document very carefully what people tell me after their dose. And then we use that as their baseline for comparison for future doses. And you figure this out by moving the needle one direction or the other with the dilution. Maybe use a placebo dose if it's not clear to me. And then we can actually figure people out and help them successfully. So the people that I've used placebos with and then understood the process and, and embraced the benefit of that, we have made great strides afterwards. And then there have been a handful of people that just decided they couldn't trust me anymore, right? I betrayed them, couldn't trust me, I must just think they're crazy. And they go on the internet and tell the whole world what an asshole I am. Um, I can't help those people. And probably no one else can either, if that's the attitude you have. To be, to be honest, like if you can't be honest about the fallibil fallibility of the human mind and the potential for a placebo effect, your odds of success with any treatment you do are diminished, to say the least. So anyway, this is a very valuable tool, and I encourage other practitioners to use it too if there's any confusion. Um, and I don't just use it with the people who think they're worse. I've also given placebo doses to people who swear up and down that the dose is making them better. And I'm just skeptical for a variety of reasons. And I'll give them a placebo, and they sometimes say that it works great. No harm done there, right? So, and then I know whether or not my treatment is truly working. I mean, that's why drug companies have to include a placebo in everything that they do, because you need to prove that the treatment is causing the effect and not the placebo effect. So giving a person a placebo is not an insult to their intelligence. It's not believing that your symptoms are all in your head. It's not some kind of criticism in any way, shape, or form. It's not a personal attack. It's not a betrayal of your trust. It's just not. It's an incredibly important and valuable and necessary tool in medical science to determine if your treatment is working or not and to actually find a way to have success for people that are suffering. So hopefully that clears things up. Um, those of you who I've treated for a long time after my handout came out and some of this came out on the internet, many people would email me their report and throw in a little question like, have I been getting placebos? Have you ever given me a placebo? Like people are super upset about this. Um, and you're just gonna have to get over that because that's, in, that's unnecessary. There's, there's really no reason to be upset about this. If I ever give somebody a placebo, it's not to be a jerk about it. It's not to try to prove you wrong. It's to try to fix whatever's going on. And it's a valuable tool. And it's a very uncommon thing that I do. I do not give people placebos very often. It's only in key circumstances. And uh, since I started doing it, it's been one of the things that has allowed me to help a lot of people that I could not help previously. So I'm going to keep doing it, like it or not. And if you don't like it, go work with a doctor who's just going to give you a bunch of stuff that doesn't work, um, which is all of us. That's unfair. <laughs> we will give people things that don't work. But, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. It's part of the practice, part of the treatment process, sometimes not very often. And if it happens it's usually a key turning point for us to be able to make progress for that person rather than you know, spinning in circles, treading water, getting nowhere. Because that's what was happening before. I had a people that we would spend months and months and months giving them doses that were doing nothing, but they thought they were worse. And so this is just part of the evolution of using this therapy successfully. And I probably belabored the point long enough, so uh, I'll, I'll end it there. And we'll, uh, we'll pick up with some other topics here pretty soon. Thanks.